Now, as we build up to tomorrow's State of the Nation address uh, by President Cyril Ramaphosa, let's hear what the queer community expects from the presidents. To expand on this, I'm joined by Ntabi Singh Mukwena from Intersex South Africa. Ntabi Singh, good morning to you. Thank you so much for your time. Expectations are high from all sectors of society when it comes to what President Cyril Ramaphosa will speak to. As you uh, take a look and take stock of the challenges in the LGBTQIA plus community, what are your expectations? from the president. Good day, thanks for having me. Um, as you say, I think ex expectations are very high from all sectors of society, but I don't think expectations are that high from the queer community. Um, historically, uh, we have not been included, we have not, um, um, our issues have not been part of the agenda at such big um, uh, platforms such as, as, as the State of the Nation address. In fact, the many times that the, uh, the state tries to address queer issues, it's often from a reactionary uh, uh, point of view and never from a planned uh, perspective, such as the State of the Nation address. Um, so this year, uh, we started a campaign called Queer Sona on, on, on Twitter, and what we're trying to do is to ask uh, 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 the community what they think uh, the president should really include in the State of the Nation address. And yes, there are a lot of things we'd like to be um, included in there, such as addressing the ongoing human rights violations against queer people, um, medical violence against um, intersex people, um, addressing access to education, employment, and healthcare from an inclusive and intersectional perspective. But these things are things we really hope for. Um, but historically, we have not really gotten these at such a big platform uh, such as SANA. Historically, um, as we take stock of what came out of the State of the Nation address in 2019, where President Cyril Ramaphosa was uh, saying that government is a qu uh, committed to establishing a gender-based violence and femicide council, as well as the National Strategic Plan, as we take a look at those promises and that commitment, how far have we come and what uh, measures and interventions have been put in place to ensure that... Uh, those plans of 2019 materialize? Yeah, I think a lot of activists will say a lot was done, and uh, 2019 was a very critical time where you know the president was making huge commitments to ensuring that you know there is uh, um, a, a, an address um, on, on GBV. But um, we're not really seeing a lot of it uh, materializing and being implemented um, in the lives of LGBT people. Um, I think. Um, you know, we're still seeing LGBT people being killed. We're still seeing LGBT people being uh, uh, um, assaulted, and there being no recourse and no justice whatsoever um, for you know for our lives. So it's, it's easy uh, to, to 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 recognize what was said, but um, there's nothing to really prove that this is actually being implemented. Uh, and that's why we're we're saying we would really like to see the president explicitly mention LGBTI people in this sauna because the only time we've heard the the LGBT uh, the president mentioned as is in relation to GBV, but there's so many other issues that are not be, being addressed. And if he does uh, mention us um, uh, uh, tomorrow, it would be a great political uh, a statement in the country um, that the president is inclusive and does mean business when it comes to LGBTI uh, issues. But it would also be an even bigger uh, statement in the region where we've seen a lot of uh, uh, backlash against LGBTI people, um, you know, in countries such as Ghana, even recently in you know in Botswana where you know there was um, that court case um, um, around um, the ruling um, on LGBTI people uh, in Botswana. When it comes to creating a safe environment free from femicide which is what uh, I would imagine is is really being advocated for very strongly by by the LGBTQI plus community what mm -hmm. do you think the challenges are for government in ensuring that uh, there is a lot of attention being paid here. I mean, you make mention of something very important that uh, LGBTQI plus matters are only mentioned when it comes to gender-based violence and never on, on, you know, exclusively speaking to some of the important challenges that are being faced. Mm. 
Well, I think um, the challenge of government is really going beyond rhetoric, really just stepping beyond having conversation, right? Um, ensuring that there's, you know, adequate legislation um, and uh, uh, policies that address GBV and ensuring that there are, you know, adequate um, frameworks and structures in the country that address GBV, ensuring that, you know, organizations that talk to GBV are well-funded, ensuring that, you know, the, the diverse and different departments that people have to encounter once they are victims are well trained and sensitized and a lot of these things are really critical but they are hardly ever you know well costed and well funded and you know implemented you know we are we are a lot of times we're just stuck at rhetoric uh, perspective or at stuck at point of you know writing guidelines and writing you know uh, plans but those plans are nev never really go to point of, of, of implementation and when we go to implementation that will that's where we'll see all the other intersectional uh, points uh, that's not just about GBV it's also about education it's also about employment it's also about health care it's also about legal gender recognition it's also about multiple things really what about homophobia and what the criminal justice system should um, really stem out when it comes to homophobia being regarded as a hate crime and, um, you know, the understanding of how dehumanizing it is? Totally. Um, I think, um, I think um, the Department of Justice is doing quite a lot of work in terms of, you know, the hate crimes bill and inclusion of homophobia and transphobia into the bill and, you know, having task forces that, that, that look at, at, at that issue. But I think, once again, the major uh, hurdle is costing and funding the work to actually do this, right? And also including many other departments because a lot of times this work is really um, centered around the Department of Justice but you really need to have all the other uh, departments also um, included in this and also to have the go-ahead and you know the support from the president's office as well you know we're hearing a lot of these uh, promises and a lot of these plans um, from the different ministers but we're not really hearing it from the president himself and you know a dedication to uh, ensuring that these plans are costed funded and implemented when it comes to, to sona 2020 um the president did make mention of the queer community in that uh, uh, speech and we saw the anc's anc women's league speaking about launching a lgbtqi plus desk in order to help with visibility of of of, of queer matters was that effective and, and really just sticking with the question of visibility, how much education is needed within that space? Sure, thank you so much. Um, I, I don't, I, I'm not going to lie, I don't really know much about the ANC's um, desk. Um, uh, I'm not really familiar with it. Uh, but I do understand when people are saying um, they want to push for visibility. Visibility is really, really important, um, and awareness raising is very important. But I think um, also understanding that visibility in itself, by itself, is not enough. You know, we can't just raise awareness on, on a particular issue and then just hold our arms. You know, we need uh, adequate support. We need the policies we need the money for it I'll, I keep reiterating that, that the issue of money so I think visibility is not enough because visibility in itself can have a backlash you know when people are more visible than those that are homophobic um, can you know inflict more harm towards them so we also need to, to look at other uh, strategies beyond visibility and that includes uh, you know uh, safety strategies that includes um, uh, legal and policy strategies beyond just um, awareness raising very well. Let's uh, leave it there for now. And Tabi Singh Mogwena, thank you so much for that uh, conversation. Of course, speaking to some of the uh, elements that uh, the queer community would like to see being raised and addressed by President Cyril Ramaphosa at the state, within his State of the Nation address.